Hi guys, Peter Kennedy here again. Uh, welcome back to another video. And what do I have? Another, a different but another elusive Mazda 6 with a P0401. Exhaust, EGR, gas, flow, insufficient. Don't have codes, but where do we start? I'm only sitting in the car, 245,000 kilometers on it. And I'm just looking at a couple of PIDs. Just to make sure, and that's related to my EGR flow, barometric pressure there, 103 kPa, which is one bar, sounds okay. Exhaust gas differential pressure, average, don't, didn't really need it, picked it, but anyway, it's in there. Exhaust gas differential pressure, so that's coming from the uh, exhaust gas, basically the exhaust pressure sensor is what I'm gonna call it. Um, what it's doing is it's the difference between before the particle filter and after the particle filter. So the difference between both points, okay? Um, I'm looking at EGR, I'm looking at the learning, I don't know, I put in anything to do with EGR, so I don't see any of these PIDs moving. Again, I wouldn't be massively familiar with this, um, and I don't probably don't use it too great, looking at exhaust temperatures here. I have exhaust gas temperature bank 109 degrees. Next page. Which is I've customized this, so these are the ones I picked. 58 degrees in sensor 2, 59 seem to be traveling kind of nice. Exhaust gas pressure sensor bank 1. This may be a different sensor, a different PID, but it may be a different sensor. I don't know, I'm going to have to verify. But for now, anyway, we have a car running of 1 bar. I'd probably suggest that that is an atmospheric number. So 1, one bar in the atmosphere, but I'd suggest that that's an atmospheric number and it's actually saying oh look what I'm looking at here as well is manifold absolute pressure just to try and see what it will be like and that is at this point lower than atmospheric which may be okay maybe a throttle flap on it and the throttle flap may be closing and the reason it may be closing is to give us maybe a low pressure EGR flow um, looking at mass air flow here again we may have a low pressure EGR valve that's open and stuff traveling I believe that number to be a little bit low I'd probably like to see that at about ballpark somewhere around 14 15 grams per second number of regenerations 269 right now all I'm doing is running ye through what I'm kind of thinking about where am I going to go for now probably going to play for another few minutes do a little observation underneath the bonnet and just see where we come up with there is EGR coolers on this that may get blocked as well so look we'll do a little bit of hunting and see right guys after doing a little bit of um just a little bit of a fast observation coming out after seeing our fall code for our egr valve i'm going looking for carbon buildup so first thing i do is i take out a map sensor that's the manifold absolute pressure sensor you can there's actually holes meant to be here on the side there's a massive or a huge amount of carbon build up there now send a boroscope in that hole to have a look maybe i'll actually do it there now in a second i was i actually started that was enough of a of a test for me i was going to start stripping um two egr valves sitting here one is high pressure one is low pressure I believe that one's the low pressure, I believe that one's the high pressure. All I'm doing is putting in a battery, a couple of bits of plastic and stuff over there, and making a bit of room for myself to get in at all these things. EGR coolers, like on the Audi we done there last week or so as well. I get a boroscope image on in here just to show what the intake port is like, or maybe I'll just close my eyes and drive on, but I'm believing now that it's gonna be carbon buildups causing all of this problem, okay? Man said the owner said that he had the injectors and the sump off and done so i'm not paying any attention in there i'm only going after carb build up on our intake system okay I'll carry on my shot you say okay guys i decided to drive on and just get too it wasn't clear enough with the boroscope if i tell the truth um first thing i done i pulled off that pipe steel pipe sitting down here um four bolts holding her in and there's two more holding the gr valve the gr valve came off I uh, pulled off the top water hose going between the radiator and here. A couple of bolts holding that wire new. Um, 
little bracket here holding the exhaust temperature sensor sitting here. Two little eight bolts, uh, two little water pipes going onto the EGR valve. Again, simple enough. Um, and that's what I'm doing. I'm starting to tear down. I'm now going to take off this EGR valve, the low pressure, and I'm going to try and get off the intake manifold at that point. I'm not a million miles away. I don't believe this, that. I don't believe that this throttle body, we're going to call it down here, is connected to anything. I've feeling she'll come up with me when I, I pull off, okay? I'll show you when I'm taking it out. What I decided next to do was pull out my battery tray, which is sitting here. It just sits in there. Two bolts there, one bolt here. Nice and easy. Um, then this actual pipe coming from the intercooler down here over, sorry, actually from the turbo back there and out across is bolted on with two bolts here. I'm pulling that off and now I'm getting into this EGR cooler. Once I that off and low pressure, then we'll take a tackle the intake manifold again. Okay, guys. First thing, when I went in here and tackled, I have this water pipe system that actually came off quite relatively easy. Just bolted on there, a couple of little bolts, one, one or two down at the bottom here. Um, hose clip at the back, hose clip up the front. That came off first. Then we went for the EGR cooler. Not so bad. Again, sitting in the back, three, three bolts sitting here just in front of where you have that intercooler pipe come off. So three nuts, actually, sorry, sitting in there. And this bolt that was sitting here on a bracket is disassembled now, so it probably doesn't look as good or as easy. Or easy to understand. This pipe was bolted onto the bottom of the EGR cooler. A couple of little plastic clips to come out of it for wiring harnesses and stuff, but again, cooler come off nice and easy. It doesn't look too blocked inside it at this point. EGR cooler then, sorry, EGR valve. Then in further had another three bolts, which you can probably see one, two, and one in the bottom. Three, two more bolts then going through the EGR valve into the intake manifold. Pull them off. It was a water pipe, small water hose that was connected on the bottom one on the bottom of it, I had to pull off this water pipe there as well, but we're getting in, we're in to our intake manifold now to get it off. If you find the pipe coming up the way from the intercooler onto the intake manifold is tight guys, or hard to get in at, or you can't figure out the clip, I'm gonna show you how it breaks down now. From the bottom, quite easy, you can get up, so there's the front of the car, there's the back, just on the inside the driver's wheel. Um, you get in at the clip here, on the hose, quite easy, okay? You can pull off that pipe. Just a nice little tip, a little shortcut for someone. There was a little plastic clip around this thing, but I just pulled it off, all right? If you can, get at the bottom one, but I'll show you how it works now in a second. Okay, the intake manifold is off. Just to show you, I thought it'd be easier if it was out when I pulled off the pipe on the bottom. This little leg around, or the ring around, wiggles down. <clears throat> Once it's down, it twists. And once it twists, you can pull it off, okay? So just to reiterate that, pull, and then pull the leg, slide it back down, okay? See it? Slide it down. And once it's down, it twists, okay? Twist anti-clockwise, and clockwise, back into place. Awesome. Just to show again, there is, you can see, little dowel, little down, dowel for lining up with that hole and that hole. You can see our intake ports are very blocked, same here in the manifold, we'll give it a good clean. Um, when the manifold, I didn't touch the alternator, I don't go near it. When the manifold run out your bolts out of it, once it's unbolted, there's nothing in there. There's no nuts, basically, they're all bolts. But it will wiggle out on the driver's side, so on, on the right-hand side as I'm looking at it, and then kind of give it a, a twist, and it will come out without touching the alternator, okay? I hope that's some benefit. But anyway, here we go. Our both our ports being very, very blocked. Okay guys, um, you saw 
And we also had the intake port being blocked up. And let's clean them. The VR valve, as we said, sits on here. It comes up standard VR valve, but the port runs down here, down through this section, down, up, and in here. But this little cover gets removed. So the exhaust gas comes down this way. Another slot in here, we'll take this out there in a second. In through this, into here, and look what's happened. So our P0401 is happening because of this blockage. Whatever about this, we're gonna go and fix that as well. But it's happening because of that. All right, we'll pull them out there now and give you a look at this thing. Out. Okay. Exhaust gas. It's down here from that port of the set. In here, then out. Here, okay. Time to start cleaning. Okay guys, this is a bit where it gets a little bit, um, dare I say, more awkward. Intake manifold cleaned uh, fairly, fairly good, very thorough. And after that, now we have to clean the intake ports. Now, we cannot just clean them. Why? Because if any of that carbon falls in those holes and into the cylinder, we're kind of in trouble. So all the carbon here that's in there has to be scraped off and brought out rather than in. Now the way I deal with, deal with, I deal with two ports at a time. So there's cylinder number one, two, number one, three in behind the wire and loom, and four. It's kind of hard to see this. I have the boroscope, as you can see, boroscope is sitting in one of the ports. They can be very, very hard now to see. I'm turning off my light. This is not going to be easy, but the way I have it set up, that's around here is how small the intake port has gotten. So between here and here is the open bit. That bit down here is a valve. What we have to do, using the boroscope, you can see the the valve opening. I have to close that valve fully. I heard the, the that valve is closed now fully. The, forgive the camera, but it closed going that way. I'm gonna bring it open again. It's valve opening and turning the wheel. How am I actually opening and closing the valve? I'm turning the wheel, just spinning the wheel, with the car in fourth gear. It's on a lift, it's down low, so I can work on it. But I have just a, a drinks crate underneath that wheel, stop that turning. So when I turn one wheel here, by turning that wheel, with it in fourth gear inside, the engine turns. And I need the boroscope for me to see, because they are so, they're so hard to see in there. That's it opening there, valve. You can see it? That's me turning and turning that way. I'm gonna go the opposite way. And when I go the opposite way, again, very hard to see, guys. But you can see the actual valve closing. I'm closed at that point. Now, I'm able to do these two ports, which is cylinder number one. The same process will happen for the other ones, but I'm going to turn probably clockwise, which is going to turn the engine the way it should be turned, and then it's probably going to be one, three, one, three, four, two, I believe is the firing order. It doesn't really matter to me right now. I'm going to look and do the same examining on all of the, um, all of the ports with the, via the boroscope. All I do, guys, is I scrape with a screwdriver. It's all very soft, okay? That's all I do. 
scrape and then I get a blow gun and blow it back out. Can't go in because the valve is closed, okay? Don't really have any good ways of containing this stuff, so just blow it out. Okay guys, here's, I just have two ports clean in there. You can see in there fairly good. They're actually hard enough now to get in at, at the back of them, okay? So you have to use your discretion. That bit that you see in at the back is the valve, but it's hard to clean in around um, the valve. So it takes a bit of time to get in and get the guts of it clean. Big difference from where it was, and it's not just on the edge, it is caked back in at the very back, as you can see there where my light is just touching off the, not touching off it, but kind of in the screenshot of where the valve is, okay? I would spend, actually a little bit now, I can see just there on the side one as well. I personally spend about, could spend about 40 minutes maybe cleaning just one port, okay? And I have no way of catching that carbon, so I can't show you and what came out of it. But definitely about 40 minutes per port. I'll be suggesting to do it right, okay? Be careful, just stay at it, get it as clean as you can. No real good fancy stuff for it. I'm using look, little toothpicks, flat screwdrivers, everything I can get. I'm also using JLM uh, intake, intake cleaner for the final clean off. Hey guys, I'm actually on the reassembly process now. I'm after getting all, all the ports cleaned and putting it back together. I thought I'd made a video of this, but I already, but I haven't. I cleaned your EGR valve, pipes, cooler. Um, I cleaned the intake manifold. Only just on reassembly, don't forget to clean your map sensor, okay? Just give it a clean out. I don't, I'm not actually going to spray anything in there. I'm going to leave it and sc I scraped it off and that's going to be good enough for me. I'll have a look when I'm done at my Keon engine off map pressures. Should be a thousand millibar, atmospheric. And then make sure it's reading when I'm driving on, okay? Just for a crack in case anyone's going to need, need a part number or break or anything. It's an intake air temperature sensor and manifold absolute pressure sensor. Okay, guys, I'm reassembled there now and I'm just having a look see how I fall codes and that crack and I'm actually been out for a drive maybe 15 or 20 minute drive I have no fall codes which I don't believe I'm going to have because it's um, very obvious obvious what we found um, thanks for watching please like and subscribe and I hope it does some bit of good or help someone out all right guys until next time Peter Kennedy signing out talk soon